Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Radio Detectives. Today's program is brought to you in part by the financial support of our listeners. And you can support the show on a one-time basis over at support.greatdetectives.net and also become one of our ongoing Patreon supporters for as little as $2 per month by going to Patreon. Dot greatdetectives.net. And I want to go ahead and thank our newest Patreon supporters. Thank you so much to John, uh, supporting the show at the Shamus level of $4 or more per month. And I also want to thank Emily and uh, Nick's son and Nora, supporting the show at the rookie level of $2 or more per month. Again, thank you so much for your support. Well, now it's time for today's episode of The Man Called X. The original air date is August the 29th of 1948, and the title is Contraband. You're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, and all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find The Man Called X. You're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. For Frigidaire refrigerators are made only by Frigidaire, a division of General Motors. And it is this association of Frigidaire and General Motors, this association of experience with experience, of skill with skill, that makes Frigidaire America's favorite refrigerator. Remember this when you choose your new refrigerator. Remember that millions of Frigidaires in millions of American homes have established Frigidaire's reputation for complete dependability for lasting satisfaction. Yes, you're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. For Frigidaire refrigerators are made only by Frigidaire, a division of General Motors. More Frigidaire refrigerators serve in more American homes than any other make. Now, Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. It all started with that long distance call from Monterey, Mexico. Pagan Zellschmidt was on the wire. After all, it's really nothing, Mr. Thurston. Just a small teensy favor. All you have to do is drop down here for a couple of days and get me out of jail. So Pagan's in jail in Monterey, Ken. That's right, Chief. We're being mixed up in a smuggling ring. Ah, good riddance. Well, as a matter of fact, I was thinking of flying to Monterey and seeing what I could do. Now, wait a minute, Ken. That chiseler's not worth five minutes of bureau time. Maybe not. That smuggling racket is. Huh? Chief, about a year ago, the Mexican government stopped all non-essential imports. Yes, yes, I know. They need to conserve their dollars for farm machinery, irrigation projects, industrial equipment. Right. To better living conditions for the Mexican people. So what's happened? There's a steady stream of luxury goods being smuggled across the border from the United States. Draining off those mighty precious dollars. That's all true enough, Now, now, please, Ken. Now, Chief, the Mexican people are starting to blame us. They're good neighbors for the fact that luxury goods are available and the essentials of living are not. And if there ever was a time in history when nations have to be good neighbors. Mm. Okay, Ken. You'd better get started for Monterey. Now, 
Naturally, with your credentials, Senor Thurston, we shall be happy to release Senor Zelschmidt into your custody. Thanks, Inspector Martinez, but uh, how'd you happen to pick him up? Well, there is a place on the border road to Laredo, Texas. We have suspected for a long time of being a rendezvous for the smugglers. We prepared a trap two nights ago. And Zelschmidt walked into it, huh? See, si. We have held him incommunicado ever since. However, I am pretty well convinced by now that he knows little about this smuggling. Yeah, but maybe we better, we better learn just what that little is. I was hoping you would remain here and work with us, senor. With the goodwill of the people of both our countries affected by this smuggling, it is imperative that... Oh, pardon. Yeah. See? Si? Senor Angala. Bueno. Uh, there is a senor Angala here who owns a small ranch nearby. He called a short while ago saying he had some information that might concern the smuggling. I thought you might care to meet with him. Of course, Inspector. Buenas tardes, Inspector. ¿Cómo estás, eh? Bueno, gracias, Angala. Senor Thurston, this is Senor Angala. Glad to know you, Senor. And uh, you, Senor Thurston. Welcome to our city of Monterey. He means that, Senor Thurston. He has a soft spot in his heart for Los Americanos. Si, sí, Senor. Are we not all Americanos? <laughs> of course, Angala. And I know that is the reason why you are here now. You can speak freely before Senor Thurston. Ah, bueno. Senores, yesterday at twilight, while riding toward a remote arroyo near the border of my land, I came upon a band of men with pack horses. Pack horses? Si. What were they doing there? Well, when I rode toward them to inquire, they greeted me with a hail of bullets. Mm, pretty rough thanks for your hospitality. Si, si. Particularly as that lonely arroyo might be quite useful as a hiding place for smuggled goods. You, uh, you could ascertain nothing definite? They outnumbered me. But perhaps you could learn something from this man Zelchmidt. Or you might go out and investigate for yourself. I only hope it will prove to be of use to you. Now, senores, if you will excuse me, I have supplies to purchase for my rancho. Uh, Senor Thurston, I extend to you the hospitality of my rancho. Oh. Please to avail yourself of it, eh? Adios, senores. Adios, Angelo. Well, Senor Thurston, shall we ride to the rancho? I think I'd better stick around with Zelschmidt, Inspector. As you wish. Though I do not believe he will be as cooperative as Angala. Maybe Angala was a little too cooperative. I am not certain I understand, senor. If Pagan Zelschmidt was held here incommunicado, Inspector, how come Angala knew he was under arrest? I swear to you, Mr. Thurston, it happened like I say. I was down here temporarily embarrassed for funds when this guy Carlos came up to me and gave me a C-note to carry an envelope to somebody on the border road. What was in that envelope, Pagan? Nothing. It was empty. And for this, that Martinez character tosses me into the clink. <laughs> Some miscarriage of justice, huh, Mr. Thurston? I'll let you know when you turn up Carlos for me. Well, uh, there's El Café del Oro where I met that joker. Maybe he isn't there right now. Let's go in and see. I don't see hide nor seek of him, Mr. Thurston. Maybe he... Hey, there's Stu Harding. Stu Harding? Sure, a Texan. He knows Carlos. Anyway, he said hello to him. Let's talk to him. Hello, Mr. Harding, my amigo friend. Well, howdy, gents. This is Mr. Thurston, one of my oldest, dearest friends. Glad to know you, Thurston. Sit down. It ain't every day I get a chance to shoot the breeze with folks from back home. Thanks, honey. What are you doing in these year parts, Thurston? Well, no, right now I'm looking for a man by the name of Carlos. Carlos, huh? Oh, the man Zelschmidt was talking to the other night, huh? That's the guy, Mr. Hardy. Do you know where we could latch on to him? Nope. Ain't seen him since that night. I knew it. See, Mr. Thurston? That crook knew something was wrong, so he used me for a guinea hand. You saying that Carlos is a crook? Sure. <laughs> Seems like I've been running into nothing but crooks out of the border here. Well, uh, I don't like to lock horns, El Schmidt, but I kind of like these Joes down here. Don't seem no different to me than nobody else. Just trying to get along in the world like you and me. 
Well, sure, Mr. Harding, I, well, I, I didn't... Way I to figure me. it, don't matter much what country a man's from, just as long as it's real people. How's that hit you, Thurston? I'll string along, Harding, but that's not getting us any closer to Carlos. Yeah, that's right. But maybe Juanita could help you. Juanita? Yeah, the girl sitting at that table over there. Hey, look at that boy with a torrid tamale. Yeah. Juanita knows just about everybody who's ever been in Monterey. Why not ask her about this, Carlos? Thanks for the tip, Harding. I will. Sure, huh? I'm right with you, Mr. Thurston. See you later, Pagan. But, Mr. Thurston. Buenos noches, senorita. May I join you? It took you long enough to ask, senor. Oh? I've been hoping you would join me for ten minutes now. Any particular reason why? A handsome senor from the United States. You are fair game for Juanita, senor. Well... That's being frank enough. Why not? You find me attractive, no? Very. I find you the same. Oh, thanks. So? What is it you wish of me, senor? A song to buy me a drink? I'm a very agreeable person. What is your pleasure? At the moment, a very simple one. Some information. Oh, you please support me, senor. Sorry, but I was wondering if you knew a man around here by the name of, uh, Carlos. <laughs> Do you know a man in the United States by the name of Smith? No. <laughs> Not many are familiar with the border roads of Laredo. So, you know, senor, there is nothing Juanita would not do for a friend. Do I qualify? That would depend. On what? On how much it was worth to you. Mm Mm-hmm. What is the price of friendship these days? I think I could be a very good friend for $200, American. Happy? Gracias. In El Mercado, senor. The marketplace? Si. Mm-hmm. The cattle stores are at the north end. If you will be there in two hours from now, I think you will find what you seek. I can depend on that. How could you doubt it, senor? After all, are we not friends? <coughs> I beg your pardon, but it's important that I speak with you, sir. That's all right, Angola. What's on your mind? Oh, I was returning from the marketplace when I saw you leaving El Café del Oro. I feel that I must warn you, senor. Warn me? What about? Well, there are certain people who frequent that café who have no love for those from the United States. Believe me, I found that out. Yeah. I wonder if Stu Harding knows that. Uh, senor Han? You know him? I uh, see. Si, si. He owns the ranch directly next to mine. We have become quite good neighbors. That could be very interesting, Angola. Huh? What do you mean, Senor Thurston? That ravine where you saw those men and pack horses. Didn't you say it was near the border of your land? See, si, see, si, that is correct. It lies directly between. Senor. Between your ranch and Harding's. See, si, Senor, but I, I, I never gave it a thought. Yeah. He has been such a good neighbor. I guess it's hard to tell sometimes just what. just how far good neighbor policy will go. <laughs> I have to go with you to find this, Carlos. Hmm? After all, I could be back at the cafe giving that Juanita three or four degrees. Forget it, Pagan. I want you to identify him. But it's so dark here at this time of night. Why did Juanita have to pick such a lonely spot anyway? Well, the cattle stalls are just up ahead. We'll know in a few minutes whether or not... Carlos... <coughs> down, Pagan, get down. <coughs> Good neighbors. <coughs> Somebody's hurt up there, Pagan. Come on. But I'm perfectly happy here with the cars, Mr. Thurston. Come on. Uh, uh, hey. Hey, that's Carlos, Mr. Rex. Boy, you really got him. No, I didn't get him. He was shot in the back. In the back? Yeah. Uh, Carlos. Carlos, can you hear me? Who shot you? Can't. Can't tell. Carlos. Somebody double-crossed you to keep you from talking. Now, who did it? Who's back of this? Do not know... 
Then who do you get your orders from? Can you tell me that? Orders? Get orders from... Yes? Get orders from... Angala. House is all lit up. That Senor Angala must be expecting us. Then we won't disarm. Take on. Come on. Take on. Hey, the ranch house is all lit up. That Senor Angala must be expecting us. Then we won't disappoint him. Take on. Come on. do like that. Nobody home. <laughs> and I thought this job was over. Did you, Pagan? Look over there near the window. Over there near the... Mr. X. Yeah. His face. W- what happened? A shotgun blast. At close range. But the clothes say it's Angala. Then, uh, then what Carlos told us don't mean a thing. If this Angala's been murdered, there must be somebody else mixed up in this. Hey, maybe somebody who was giving him orders. Yeah. That's right, Pagan. This job isn't over. It's just begun. Just a moment, we continue with Frigidaire's Man Called X, created by J. Richard Kennedy. This is Wendell Niles speaking. Lots of people take one look at a Frigidaire refrigerator, notice all its extra storage space, generous room for frozen foods and many other advantages, and say, that's the refrigerator for me, a Frigidaire. But if you would like to take a little longer to think about such an important purchase as a new refrigerator, then think about this. More Frigidaires serve in more American homes than any other refrigerator. So when you buy a Frigidaire refrigerator, you get extra refrigeration experience. Experience which costs nothing extra, but does assure extra satisfaction. Just one example. The famous Frigidaire meter miser, a product of Frigidaire experience, is the simplest coal-making mechanism ever built. And think about this, too. Your Frigidaire dealer is a substantial member of your community in business to stay. So you can depend on him to advise you correctly when you buy. To be at your service always. Yes, here are three things to think about when you buy a refrigerator. The refrigerator itself, the manufacturer who makes it, and the dealer who sells it to you. You'll be sure on all three counts if you follow this one simple rule. Ask to see the name Frigidaire when you ask to see a new refrigerator. Now to return to Frigidaire's Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. The Mexican government has stopped non-essential imports in order to use its precious dollars for the betterment of living conditions among the people. But the smuggling of American luxury goods across the border threatens to drain away those precious dollars. That's why Ken Thurston flew to Monterey... Now, an hour after the discovery of a Senor Angala's body, Inspector Martinez has taken over, and Ken and Pagan are driving away from the ranch house. You've got everything straight, Pagan. Oh, sure, Mr. X. It's a cinch. That baby will fall for me like a ton of lead. I'm not interested in that. Now, when you're through, report back to me at the hotel. Okay, but where are you going meanwhile? Pay a little call on Stu Hardy. The guy from Texas? What do you want to see him for? He's a neighbor of Angala's, Pagan. I just want to see how neighborly he can really be. So Angala's been murdered. 
Thurston, that's downright hard to take. I didn't know he was such a close friend of yours, Hardy. He wasn't. But I always figured him to be a right nice hombre. Uh-huh. Ever have any business dealings with him? Nope. Didn't even ship our cattle together. Kind of a shame, too. Why's that? Well, we both shipped to Laredo. Both got cattle in there right now, as a matter of fact. We saved money by sharing the same cattle trucks. Why didn't you? I didn't know these people were going to be so friendly like when I bought this place a year ago. So I got my own. Yeah. Well, if there's nothing more, you can tell me I'll be on the way. By the way, Hardy. Yeah? That's a can of gun oil on your table. You wouldn't have been feeding a shotgun recently, would you? Matter of fact, I was, Thurston. A coyote was bothering my chickens. Just got the critter tonight. No harm in that, is there? No. Just as long as the coyote's name wasn't Angara. Good night, honey. So, senor, you have come back to visit Juanita a little while, huh? That's right, baby. I thought maybe we could smooch over a couple of things or two. Anything Juanita can do for you, you have got a name and it shall be yours. <laughs> now you're talking, baby. For a price. Naturally, for it. A... Hey, who was talking about money? Unless you care to speak to Juanita with cold cash, senor. You're but wasting your time. Oh, now, baby. Adios, senor. Now, hey, wait a minute. Okay, okay. Hey, how would you like a slice of 10,000 American simoleons? And where would you get 10,000, senor? I got inside information we can get as a reward. Now, look, baby. That Inspector Martinez and Mr. Thurston got a hunch that Stu Harding is mixed up in it. If you latch on to some evidence that'll help me pin it on him, <laughs> we'll split the reward right up and down the middle. 60-40. <laughs> You're a fool, Senor Verschmidt. I know nothing of this. And if I did, I most certainly would not tell you. But, baby... I think perhaps you'd better leave now. But, Juanita... Before I have paid or throw you out. Good night. But... Good night. <laughs> Thurston speaking. Hello, amigo. Hello, Anita. This is a pleasant surprise. Is it, Senor Thurston? Do you doubt it? Of course not, Senor. And I think you will find it even more pleasant. I have some information for you. Oh? The cattle trucks of Senor Harding will return from Laredo tonight. What about them? It might pay you to check into them very carefully. What would I find if I did, Juanita? Enough to make a check payable to the amount of $10,000. Hasta la vista, amigo. <laughs> Except, uh, Inspector Martinez? Si, Senor Thurston. My men have blocked the road from Laredo. Nothing can get by. Good. I only hope you know what you're doing, Senor. Don't worry, Inspector, I do. You see, I got the tip from a uh, very good friend of mine. These are pretty high-handed goings on, Thurston. Inspector Martinez knows what he's doing, Harding. But, man, it just don't make sense checking my empty cattle trucks for smuggled stuff. Maybe he's right, eh, Mr. Thurston? They've almost finished and they haven't found nothing yet. And they ain't going to, neither. Man alive, you think I'd be crazy enough? Senor Thurston? Yes, Inspector? Would you and Senor Harding come over to this truck, please? Well, Harding? Sure, why not? What is it, Inspector? Look here, senores. This section of the flooring... Hey, look at that, Mr. Thurston. There's another bottom underneath the bottom. Precisely. A false flooring on the truck. And here, senores, I shine my flashlight inside. You see? Boy, take a couple of ganders of that. Radios, cameras, perfume. Yes, all contraband goods. Brought into Mexico in empty cattle trucks from Laredo. Well, honey? There's something plenty wrong here, Thurston. That truck ain't mine. It belongs to the Angala Ranch. It won't wash, honey. You told me yourself you never used Angala's trucks for your cattle. Inspector... You better put him under arrest. I don't 
don't get it, Mr. X. We clean up this smuggling racket thanks to my invaluable services and start back for USA. Only instead of crossing the border, we stop at this, this jerk whistle hotel. Yeah, that's right there, young. Here's the elevator. Two, please. Russia. Come on, Pagan. But what are we doing here anyway? One of Inspector Martinez's men told me an old friend was stopping here. I want to say hello. Here's the room. Hey, the pretty pepper pot. Hello, Juanita. Mind if we come in? Mind, senor? You know you are always welcome. Please do. Thanks. I am very happy that you are here, but how does it happen, amigo? Oh, it was simple, baby. After I slapped that no good Harding in the clink for smuggling, I had nothing in my hands but time. So... Harding arrested? Then my information was of some value, King. It helped, Juanita. Help, ah, bueno. I am so glad for your sake. And not for yours? Mine. I thought your only interest was in that little check. So you have come here merely to pay me. I must confess I am a little disappointed. You'll be more than a little disappointed, Juanita. You're not getting any check. Not getting it? But if Senior Harding is under arrest... You didn't lead us to any evidence against him. Sure, you're joking. Did I not inform you to stop his trucks? Yes, I. And we found the one with false flooring and the contraband. Ah, then you admit I let you do the evidence. It's evidence, all right. But not against Harding. Now, I know you're joking. Who else could it possibly be used against? Against the person we're really after, Juanita. Angala. Angala? Mr. Thurston, it must be this Mexican heat or, or something. That Angala character is dead. No, no, Pagan. He wanted us to think so because he was afraid we were closing in. That's why he killed Carlos and murdered one of his ranch hands with a shotgun so the man couldn't be recognized. And Gala dressed the body in his clothes. So we jumped to the proper conclusions. You really can. How can you possibly believe that? Because the same thing that started him smuggling, that made you work with him, gave you both away. Gold. Gold? What gold? The extra $10,000 I offered Juanita. It looked like a soft touch. $10,000 for pinning their crimes on someone else. So they tried to frame Harding by slipping one of Angala's trucks with his, his convoy. And just how did that give us away, Senor Thurston? Mr. Rex, it's Angala. Yeah. So you in the next room, Angala? You will answer my question, Senor. Oh, I see the gun. I'll answer. Who else but you would have known about the false flooring in that truck? Or could have slipped it into Harding's convoy? And why Nita should never have made that telephone call to call you about it? Martinez had it traced. I see. Juanita, get behind me. Open the door into the hallway. See, si, Angala. You can't get out that way, Angala. Martinez and his men are out there. Martinez. He's bluffing. Open the door. But if he's not. Open the door. See, si, see. Si. Angala. You're under arrest, Angala. Drop the gun. Get out of my way, you fool. Fuck it, up. Angala! <laughs> so. It's all over, Mr. X. No, Pagan, it's not over. There are others besides these two, many others. But they'll give themselves away someday, just as these two did. You see, Juanita and Angala thought of their neighbors only in terms of money, not as fellow men. They didn't know that man can't live without the faith and goodwill of others. Well, they've learned now, all right. Yes, they've learned that man can't live for gold alone. Frigidaire star Herbert Marshall will return in just a moment. Frigidaire's Man Called X is presented each week with the best wishes of your Frigidaire dealer. We invite you to come in and learn about the famous line of Frigidaire electric appliances. Refrigerators, ranges, water heaters, home freezers, the new automatic washer, dryer, ironer, and many other Frigidaire refrigerating and air conditioning products for homes, farms, stores, offices, and factories. Excuse me, Mr. Niles, but can you tell me something about Frigidaire electric ranges? I'd be glad to, but uh, say, here's a better idea. See these wonderful Frigidaire electric ranges for yourself. Learn all about them at your Frigidaire dealers. And now, Frigidaire star, Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. Next week... Worth Your Weight in Gold, the story of modern piracy off the China coast. As usual, Leon Belasque will be along as Pagan Zelschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return 
There's a man called X. Good night. Richard Ayers' Man Called X is directed by D. Engelback, with music composed and conducted by Johnny Green. Tonight's story was written by Sidney Marshall and Maurice Zim. So until next week, same time, same station, this is Wendell Niles speaking for Frigid Air, made only by General Motors. All characters and incidents used on this program are fictitious. Any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental. CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Welcome back. Well, the chief was uh, willing to let Pagon rot, and I can understand the sentiment, but having Pagon around actually does seem to work better for uh, Ken Thurston, despite the little annoyances of, you know, having him betraying him all the time. This is one week where the uh, stated uh, government policy in Mexico uh, that is, you know, the subject of uh, the man called X's intervention actually doesn't seem to make any sense to me. I can't understand, at least based on the justification given in the episode, it's not necessarily even that i you know, wouldn't agree with it, agree, disagree. I just kind of have to understand. I mean, I could say uh, placing a ban on imports into Mexico if uh, what the government was trying to do was to protect uh, Mexican industry and manufacturing so that any money that was spent on these non-essential goods would end up be going to Mexican companies. So if that's what they were going for, I could understand the policy, whether you agree with it or not. But the way they explained it is they were banning the import of non-essential goods so that farm equipment would uh, be bought and other things that were necessary for the growth of the economy. And that that doesn't make sense. I mean, if the government owned all the money and it had a portion that it used to buy non-essential goods and distribute them, that'd be one thing. But unless I'm missing something, and there was some other situation that prevailed in Mexico uh, in the post-war era, non-essential goods would be purchased by individuals with their disposable income. And so if I have money to buy, let's say, a radio, and the government's barred importation of radios, I'm not going to say, well, darn, let me in, get together with a neighbor instead and buy a tractor. That That's just not how things work. Like I said, I could see if it was a situation where it's, you know, essentially protectionism, where they're ensuring that rather than importing, people are buying Mexican-made goods which has everything stay within the Mexican economy. But maybe the moral here is that you don't want to try to explain a complex economic situations as like a 30-second lead-up to a uh, radio mystery. Of course, it may be a bit of a challenge of the man called X. He doesn't just go to places and ensure laws are enforced. There has to be a great uh, moral crusade behind why he's going to do this. And if, as a U.S. agent, he was going to Mexico to help them enforce a, an embargo on goods that uh, were imported from the U.S., among other countries, that might require a bit of explaining to the U.S. audience of the program. I do want to go ahead and thank our Patreon supporter of the day, Thank you to Jameson, a Patreon supporter since June of 2015, currently supporting us at the Detective Sergeant level of $7.14 or more per month. Again, thank you so much for your support. Appreciate that uh, long time standing. 
All right, well, that will actually do it for today. Join us back here tomorrow for Mystery is My Hobby, and we'll be back next Wednesday with another episode of The Man Called X. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.